Hi everybody, I thought I would tell you about my faith. Um, I think when I was 18 years old, I picked up on some verses that I couldn't quite get connected to what most people would say. Some of those verses included no longer sinning. Uh, I think you can see a lot of that in the book of 1 John. I went to a reformed or a Christian reformed church didn't match up after I spoke with the associate pastor. I brought that question to him and I asked him about that, about the sin problem. And his answer was, you sin until you die. And I, I think he meant till you physically die, like your body that you're in is no more. That didn't match up with me. It didn't quite fix the problem. I still saw it as a problem, but I couldn't connect it in all the scripture. I'm continuing on everybody um, where I left off about not getting the sin problem resolved after speaking to that associate pastor. What, what next happened was, I don't know if you've ever seen, but at festivals or sometimes on street corners, you might see individuals, maybe like three or four or less, holding a sign and on the sign it says, if you still sin, you're not saved. So that happened to me, I noticed that, and I was with a friend and we walked up to the person and I was interested because I wanted to find out what they were saying. It got my attention. I mean, if something, if something was true that you're not saved, if you still sin, I would clearly want to know what that means. So I just kind of slowly learned in interest. Um, I made contact with a few individuals um, that that held that sign or that that organized together under that idea. But the problem that I ran into was even though they 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 said it, they didn't. I didn't see them connecting the scripture. Like I didn't see them describing the scripture or encouraging or edifying or defending and standing up and showing how the scriptures all work together. So what that left me with was kind of a uncertain faith, I guess, or I was not, I didn't have my defense up. I didn't have my defense or my ability, or I didn't have the understanding. And where I ended up going from there was I believed that there was not, there was a way to be without sin, but the way that I believed that was to do it through my actions. So for example, I memorized the 10 commandments, um, like in my mind, I would repeat them or out loud, I would repeat them sometimes several times a day. I had various versions of the Bible. I had a, a Hebrew, translation Bible um, written in English. I had various translations of Bibles written in English and I would I would try to find the absolute best, most accurate translation I could find because my goal was to be so good and to be so so close to what I think I should be. And in doing that, I would repeat the Ten Commandments. I would live that out. I would take a uh, Sabbath day um, that included Saturdays. Um, I would require even that with my kids, Landon and Ailey. Over the years, that really wore on Leslie. She didn't like that. Um, she might have had a point that it wasn't meant to be that way, but I don't think her understanding or her faith cleared to me, well, what is the sin problem still? So I still didn't have that sin problem fit. Okay, this should be the last of the three videos for my faith um, from where it was to where it went through to where it got to. Um, probably in the last four years, I got more interested, I had more passion, I had more desire, more drive to get connected, to be with other believers, um, to listen to, to understand, to encourage, to support. Um, and I continue to get more books. I continue to get more books by various authors who would describe different different viewpoints on various scriptures and what it means or what it doesn't mean and how you connect it with that. What I stumbled across maybe seven months ago now, so this would have been late last year, um, 
was some videos because I would I would still try to figure out well what is the sin problem or not living in sin or what do you have to do and there were two people that I found I think through YouTube or various other channels the first person that I found he described it very much so as you you don't sin but you have to do certain things you still have to kind of be on guard you have to do this you have to do that you can live it out and you cannot sin but you have to follow this and you have to look at that and you have to make sure you read this and then you do that. The other person that I saw, which was um, Perry Green, he had some videos on YouTube and one of the original videos I saw of him was a debate and I don't remember who it was he was arguing with. It was intense though. I mean, he, there, was, there was yelling, shouting, swearing, yelling, someone muting someone else, just shouting like, the point across, trying to make the point um, in a way that clearly conveyed conviction. Um, and the other person that was debating was trying to, you know, trying to respond and justify, but then make conclusions and do it almost in a calm manner, almost trying to appear righteous manner. And that got my interest. I mean, at that point, I saw at least, okay, here's someone who's standing up and defending it in a way that I haven't seen it before. I haven't heard about it before. And from that point, just starting to learn and being in contact, and I was, I was still in contact as well with the other, the other person that I was, was, I even have a book from, I'm trying to think of what his name was. And I even emailed him a few times with various questions. But I also emailed um, Perry a few times, just getting in contact with him. And he started to show just one scripture at a time. Very simple, like a child. And with my desire or understanding that there are verses that say you don't sin or you can't sin, but I've never been able to connect the dots. I didn't have anyone to explain it to me. How, how does that function? How does that work? What do I, the question I would always go back to is, what do I do? Um, there, are, there are verses out there which contradict a lot of things too. For example, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I would look at that verse before and I would think, okay, I'm gonna be perfect. What do I have to do to be perfect? But that didn't, that didn't happen. That, that didn't connect, that didn't, from what I was trying to see, what I was trying to read, what I was trying to understand, didn't connect. But once I started going through the verses one at a time um, and seeing that yes, there is a sin problem, seeing that yes, I have that sin problem and seeing that I cannot correct my behavior to get past that sin problem, the realization in, in scripture, it, it points all to Jesus everything everything in heaven everything on earth and it's not my action or inaction or what i do or what i what i don't do it's jesus and it's what he did and it's what he finished and it's what he accomplished and the access that i get to that is belief it's re it's stopping my act stopping trying to be perfect stopping trying to do what i have to do or not do it's stopping that or in other words repenting from that and look to Jesus and trust, just trust, just trust like a child. And as you study, as I was looking through one scripture at a time, and it helped immensely to have someone else that had walked through it, that had seen and connected the scriptures once to the next and slowly and carefully and without going outside to interpret something in a word or something in the Greek phrasing, but just looking at the English language and the translation of what it was, that finally clicked the sin problem for me. That clicked the sin problem that I knew I had, that I tried to get past, that I couldn't get past. And the, the answer was always as simple as Jesus said. And that him saying it is finished, that's it. There's a verse in John chapter nine, verse 41, Jesus describes, those whose eyes are open, they still see sin, so their sin remains. Those whose eyes are closed, and my words don't count, I would just go to that verse, John 9, 41. I would read it, preferably in a translation. Uh, the King James Version is, 
I think the ideal or authorized version, um, there's a lot changed or missing or removed from all other versions. It's, it's, the, it's the authorized version. Um, that's, that's one verse, that's one example. It, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem when you realize that you have, you still have the sin problem, you try to cover it up. You try to try to make yourself look good. You try to kind of attack other people, but what you don't realize is when you attack other people, you're just showing your sin. You're just showing your anger. You're not necessarily anger, but you're showing the traps that you've fallen in along the way, trying to be some kind of disciple or some kind of Christian and not actually believing in what Jesus did and what he said and what what matches up with every verse in the Bible. And so that's that's what happened. That's that's what happened and that's how I can say now I'm perfect. I have Jesus to look at and to trust and not even to do anything um, based on the Bible. I can defend that, I can describe that, I can share that, I can challenge you. I can challenge you in your thoughts, what you might justify or what you might excuse yourself and it's not a fun process. Um, you may have seen on my Facebook account this past few days, it's dirty. I mean, when you get to the bottom of people and their heart, it's dirty. They just don't realize it. And if they don't realize it, you have to show them. And you can't show them by sugarcoating it and saying, no, you're fine. Yeah, you can kind of carry that along still. You can keep that. That's, that's not going to hurt. No, it does. If the sin problem is not dealt with, if you haven't gone from sin to no sin, it's still there and you have a problem. And so that's why it's so difficult just to get to the bottom when you speak to anyone and everyone. And it's, it's, it's a huge problem. I mean, you can look around you. I mean, I can look around me. It's just a huge problem. And so that's, that's what I walk through. Those are the steps. That's where I am. That's how I got to where I am now. Once you know the truth, you cannot all know it. Capiches? Perry is making the church look like a bunch of hypocrites because of the way he's teaching. 